Hurry up. Isn't it ready yet? I'm terribly sorry. Please, wait just a little longer. Voices demanding meals could be heard from the surrounding rooms. Indeed, it was already past seven in the evening. What on earth was going on? Then, the female hotel manager came to our private room as well and offered her apologies. Apparently, all the chefs had suddenly been poached by a major hotel, leaving only one apprentice chef to prepare the meals. It was impossible for a single apprentice chef to prepare a large amount of food. Then, my wife put her hand on my shoulder and gave me a signal. I stood up and headed to the kitchen. Little did I know at that moment, this decision would change the course of my life. My name is John Miller, 31 years old. I was just an ordinary guy, born to a chef father and a homemaker mother. My father worked as a chef in a high-end restaurant and would often teach me how to cook on his days off. Those cooking sessions with my busy father were precious moments for me. Even when I was still young, he let me handle a large knife and taught me how to slice beef. While my mother watched in surprise, she quietly observed us. My parents were supportive, letting me try anything I wanted without any objections. Eventually, my dream became to be a chef like my father. Knowing my dream, my father was as happy as if it were his own, teaching me various dishes almost every day. Watching us, my mother would always smile gently. And John, you can become a wonderful chef, was always my mother's favorite thing to say. I loved my parents dearly. But the happiness didn't last. Suddenly, my high school received a call. My teacher urgently told me to go home. Wondering what had happened, I rushed home. I found my father in tears inside the house and my mother was lying on the bed. My mother was already cold to the touch. It seemed to be a sudden heart attack. I called my mother's name over and over, but there was no response. After that day, my father threw himself even more into his work, and we talked less and less. I think he was also feeling the loneliness of my mother's sudden absence. And I began to feel like my own life didn't matter anymore. No matter how tough the days were, my father was not around because of work. My heart was broken by the loneliness of not having my mother around. After graduating high school, I didn't go to culinary school to become a chef but started working instead. Thanks to a recommendation from my high school, I landed a job at an international five-star hotel. Getting such a wonderful job right out of high school was almost like a miracle. However, when I informed my father about my job offer, he just nodded sadly. He must have felt lonely at the thought of his only family member moving out. I left home when I got the job. It was too painful to continue living in a house filled with memories of my mother. When I was leaving, my father gave me a knife with my name engraved on it. I had planned to give this to you when you moved out. Make sure to cook for yourself and take care of your health, even when you're living alone. Thank you. I took the knife my father gave me and left home. With a heavy heart and complex feelings, I headed to my new place, carrying my substantial luggage. Working at the International Five Star Hotel was exciting and enjoyable. It was fulfilling and I even aspired to make a name for myself there. And then, one day, after such days had continued for 10 years, I received a call from my father. I'm going to have surgery, so I need you to sign a consent form. I turned pale. My father, having surgery. What was going on? I rushed to the hospital. In the hospital room bed, my father was lying down. Seeing my father for the first time in a while, I found he had aged considerably and looked like an elderly man. Although my father's surgery wasn't life-threatening, I decided then that I wanted to work close to him. So, I quit my hotel job of 10 years. My father looked at me with regret, but it couldn't be helped. 
I decided to switch jobs to a major hotel nearby. I was hired as a full-time janitor at the major hotel. I was relieved to have found re-employment. However, the job was harder than I had imagined. I was responsible for ensuring that the guests didn't experience any discomfort, meticulously cleaning the entrance, guest rooms, and more. I sweep carefully with a broom, then go over it with a vacuum cleaner. After that, I polish the floor meticulously with a cloth. I had never cleaned my own house this thoroughly. It was then that I truly understood how demanding it is torn money. It was Ashley, a fellow new employee, who spoke to me at that time. Are you a new employee too? Cleaning is tough, isn't it? Ashley had her long hair tied back and her large eyes sparkled. I'm a new employee as well. Yeah, we have to clean even the smallest details. As Ashley and I complained, we continued our cleaning. Then, a loud voice echoed across the floor. Hey, you two, cut the chatter. John, your cleaning is too sloppy. Yes, I'm sorry. It was Mason, the person in charge of training new employees. Mason was a man about a decade older than me. He had taken a particular dislike to me, claiming I was the worst performer among the new employees. Do you even have any motivation? I'll straighten out your attitude. From then on, Mason's treatment of me worsened. He would deliberately mess up the rooms I had cleaned or make me clean the same area over and over again. Hey, incompetent, redo this area. But I just cleaned it a moment ago. What? talking back to me. Mason always approached me with a domineering attitude. But as a new employee, I couldn't muster a response. Days like these continued, and I was exhausted both mentally and physically, but there was a silver lining. It was that Ashley and I started dating. As fellow newcomers, we naturally had a lot to talk about. Our tastes in food and TV programs were identical, so it was only natural that we ended up together. After we started dating, I became more positive about things. I think it's because Ashley's positivity contagiously affected me in a good way. And after a while, Ashley and I decided to get married. Turns out, Ashley was pregnant with my child. Ashley couldn't continue working due to her condition, so she decided to quit her job. She didn't want to leave her job, as she was proud of her work and enjoyed it, but it couldn't be helped. In response, I decided to work even harder. Mason gave a puzzled look when he heard Ashley was quitting. And then, glaring at me, he said, Ashley is good at her job. If anyone should quit, it should be you. But there was nothing I could do. Ashley was suffering from severe morning sickness. It was so bad that she couldn't even eat. Worried, I looked up food she could possibly eat and decided to cook for her. Ashley loves vegetables. I thought I'd make a dish that highlighted the flavors of the vegetables to make it easier for her to eat. As I was thinking about this, I busied myself with cooking. Before I knew it, the meal was ready and placed on the table. Ashley's eyes lit up. John, that's amazing. You're even more skilled than I am. I'm impressed. She started eating right away. She ate it as if it was delicious. Despite saying she couldn't eat because of the morning sickness, she finished everything quickly, which made me happy. Then, with a curious look, Ashley asked me, how come you're so good at cooking, John? You're way better than me. I realized I hadn't told Ashley about this and decided to share. I took a deep breath. You know, I once dreamed of becoming a chef. Remember my dad is a chef, right? I used to learn a lot about cooking from him when I was little. Hearing this, Ashley nodded. She seemed satisfied with my explanation for being good at cooking. From then on, I took over the cooking duties for the unwell Ashley. Ashley always said the meals I made were delicious. So, cooking became a way for me to relax. 
and there was good news at work too. Mason, who had been treating me poorly and saying I was incompetent, was transferred to a different luxury hotel. Since Mason had always looked down on me and said awful things, his absence significantly reduced my stress levels. Since Mason was transferred and no longer around, I was able to work more freely at the workplace. And then six months passed. I was at the hospital where Ashley was admitted. Today, I was finally going to become a father. Ashley was in the delivery room, and I was anxiously waiting for our baby's birth. I hoped for the health of both mother and child. That's what I prayed for as I waited. Then the moment came. I could hear the cries of a baby from the delivery room. And the midwife came to me, holding the baby. It's a girl. Congratulations. I received the baby from the midwife and held her in my arms. The tiny, soft baby was wide-eyed, looking around. I felt she resembled me in some way. So, I'm a father now. Hello there, I'm your daddy. I spoke to the baby. She stared back at me intently. So adorable. While I was admiring the baby, a familiar voice reached my ears. John, congratulations. It was my dad's voice. I turned around immediately. And there he was, standing. Dad, what are you doing here? Ashley told me. When Ashley and I decided to get married, I had only informed my dad about the marriage, but he hadn't met Ashley yet. That was because he was busy with work, and we didn't have the chance to meet up. I didn't want to interrupt my dad's work. However, Ashley had secretly informed my dad about the birth without telling me. I was touched by Ashley's thoughtfulness. My father looked livingly at the baby, his grandchild, squinting his eyes. She's adorable. She looks just like you when you were a baby. May I hold her? I handed my daughter to my father. Tears streamed down his face as he held her. I was happy to see this. After a while, Ashley came out of the delivery room in a wheelchair. Seeing my father and me together, she smiled. I rushed to Ashley's side. I had something important to tell her. Ashley, thank you for our beautiful baby and for letting my father know. I looked into Ashley's eyes and expressed my heartfelt gratitude. Tears naturally rolled down my cheeks. Ashley, wiping away my tears, laughed and said, Oh, look at you, the crybaby dad. My father laughed too, standing beside us. My father named our daughter Emily. That was Ashley's earnest wish. Ashley expressed her deepest thanks to my father for naming our daughter. I decided to take two weeks off from my hotel job to take care of Ashley and our daughter Emily. Those two weeks spent with Ashley and Emily were incredibly joyful. Every day, I cooked meals for Ashley. With every meal, Ashley would eat and express how delicious it was, moved by the taste. Cooking is really enjoyable. That's what I thought. When my leave ended and I returned to work after a long absence, the hotel manager introduced me to a man. It was, unmistakably Mason. Mason hadn't changed at all from six months ago. Why was Mason, who was supposed to have been transferred, here? I had a bad feeling about this. Little did I know at that moment how right my bad feeling would turn out to be. I am Mason, the chief manager. I'm glad to be back at this hotel after a long time. I look forward to working rigorously again with all of you. I was shocked that Mason was assigned to this hotel again. Moreover, he got promoted and is now the chief manager. Well, he probably doesn't even remember me. With that thought, I returned to my station and started working. Then, Mason approached me and started saying something surprising. Hey, incompetent, you still can't even clean properly. You're insolent for someone so incompetent. I thought the nightmare was repeating itself. 
I hadn't imagined that Mason would remember me and call me incompetent again. I looked down and simply said, I'm sorry. Mason snorted with laughter and said, a useless person is no good at anything before walking away from me. I was seething inside, but I knew there was no point in defying Mason. It was better to keep quiet for my own sake. I sighed as I made my way home. I was completely exhausted. The next day at work, Mason was already waiting for me. You're late. Clean every corner of this floor. We have important guests coming today. Mason seemed more on edge than usual. A five-star chef is coming to our hotel. My colleague whispered the information in my ear. Really, what is a chef from a five-star hotel coming here? As I wondered, my colleague whispered again. He's planning to recruit new chefs, aiming to poach a few from renowned five-star hotels. Poaching, huh? Well, it has nothing to do with me. I followed Mason's orders and cleaned every corner of the floor with my colleagues. I intended to be careful to ensure not even a speck of dust was left on the handrails or shelves. However, Mason, looking irritated, approached me. Can't you even do a simple cleaning job? There's still dust left. We're running out of time. Hurry up. That couldn't be. I had cleaned thoroughly just before, but irritated, I started cleaning again. Then, voices came from the hotel's entrance. Glancing over, I saw famous chefs, the kind you'd see on TV or in magazines, talking with Mason. One of the chefs glanced my way, and I instinctively looked down to avoid eye contact. Then, Mason and the chefs headed towards the hotel's kitchen. I've heard that hotels are struggling with their finances due to rising costs. Therefore, to become even slightly more popular than other hotels, differentiation from the rest is essential. Our hotel must be trying to differentiate itself through its restaurant. I thought about the hotel's management troubles as if it were someone else's problem. And again on this day, when I came home exhausted, my father was somehow at home for some reason and Ashley was grinning. What's going on? Seeing the two of them like that gave me the creeps. Then Ashley leaned in and asked, do you know what day it is today? My mind was filled with question marks. Today is, oh right. I hesitantly opened my mouth. Today is our wedding anniversary. I'm really sorry I forgot. Ashley laughed at my apologetic tone. It's okay, you've been busy with work. You've been so exhausted lately. It doesn't feel like an anniversary. Ashley had been paying close attention to me and was worried. Let's go to that traditional, well-established hotel restaurant you've always wanted to try. I've asked your dad to look after Emily for today. Ashley showed me the dinner tickets she had. They were from Dylan, a friend from the days when I worked at a five-star hotel. I had always wanted to go, but we never found a time to to our busy schedules. But I wondered, could my father really take care of Emily by himself? I started to worry. Sensing my concern, my father said, I've taken care of you when you were a baby, hadn't I? Go out and enjoy yourselves for a change, he said with a smile. Taking my father's words to heart, Ashley and I decided to go. Thanks, Dad. We'll be off then. Ashley and I left the house hand in hand. It had been a long time since we went out just the two of us. It's been a year since we got married. Time flies. I felt truly fortunate to have married Ashley. With a deep sense of happiness, we entered the traditional hotel's restaurant. The atmosphere was different from the luxury hotel where I worked and the building was full of charm with a well-established feel. Upon showing our dinner tickets at the reception, we were led to a beautiful private room with a view of the garden. It seemed all seating in this restaurant was private, befitting an established hotel. Ashley and I were in awe of the room's opulence. After a while, Dylan came to greet us. 
Dylan was still as handsome as ever. John, it's been a while. Thanks for coming to our hotel. Make yourselves comfortable. Thanks. We're looking forward to the meal. Dylan left with a smile. This traditional hotel was run by Dylan's parents before he took over. Its cuisine is renowned, even featured in the Michelin Guide. Dylan was always hardworking, even during his time at the Five Star Hotel. The hotel's popularity is undoubtedly due to Dylan's efforts. We couldn't wait to see what dishes would be served. Ashley and I couldn't wait. We were so excited. But no matter how long we waited, there was no sign of our meal arriving. I glanced at the clock. It was already past seven in the evening. Understanding it was a busy hour, Ashley and I patiently waited. Then, we heard a familiar voice from the next private room. This is taking forever. Are the chefs asleep in the kitchen? This voice, it was Mason. I held my head in my hands. I didn't want to spend this wonderful time, even in a private room, next to Mason. Ashley looked at me worriedly as I held my head in my hands. Reluctantly, I explained the situation about Mason to her. Ashley then said, let's ignore him, and held my hand reassuringly. My heart gradually calmed down. But then, Mason's voice was heard again. Hurry up, isn't it ready yet? Very sorry, it'll just be a little longer, please. Not just from Mason, but we started hearing impatient calls for food from other rooms as well. It had been over an hour since Ashley and I began waiting for our meal. What was going on? As I was pondering this, Dylan came over. All our chefs were poached by a major hotel chain. Only an apprentice is left in the kitchen. This could be the end for our traditional hotel. John, please help us. Dylan was at a loss. Then Ashley placed her hand on my shoulder and said, John, I think you're the only one who can help. Looking at Ashley in surprise, she met my gaze with determination. I know everything, John, it's your time to shine. So, Ashley knew all along. Then there's no need to hide it anymore. I stood up. Dylan, lead me to the kitchen. I rushed to the kitchen. In the kitchen, a young apprentice chef was frantically cooking alone. Dylan handed me an apron. I quickly washed my hands and put on the apron. Looking at the ingredients laid out, I immediately started cooking. The apprentice chef followed my instructions perfectly. Watching my technique, Dylan muttered, that's the John I know. In no time, several dishes were ready and the staff began delivering them to the private rooms. Soon after, sounds of amazement came from the rooms. Wow, this is delicious. What is this? I've never tasted anything this good before. But the cooking was far from over. I kept creating new dishes, one after another. The apprentice chef was astounded by my skills. Who exactly are you? While moving as I instructed, the apprentice chef threw a question at me. I answered his question directly. I used to be the head chef at a five-star hotel overseas. The apprentice chef dropped the radish he was holding. What, really? Don't drop the food on the floor. Keep moving. Don't stop. Yes, sir. Indeed. My previous job was as the head chef at an overseas five-star hotel. I started working at a five-star hotel right after high school. Initially, I was part of the wait staff, but one day, while preparing staff meals, Mike, the head chef at the time, saw potential in me as a chef. Probably because my father had taught me how to cook when I was young. After several years as an apprentice, I was appointed head chef at an overseas five-star hotel. Honestly, I was surprised to become the head chef, something I had never imagined, but seeing people moved by my cooking made me happy. However, I was worried about leaving my father alone in America since I was working overseas. To me, 
my father was just as important as cooking. I could continue cooking even if not at a five-star hotel. Reluctantly, I resigned from the head chef position. I had never told Ashley about my background. It wasn't that I was hiding it, it was just hard to bring up. When I later asked how she knew about my past as a head chef, she said my father had told her. That made sense to me. While reminiscing about the past, I continued to cook relentlessly with the apprentice chef. Now only the dessert remained. Today's dessert was a chocolate mousse. I plated the already prepared mousse and started decorating it. It had been a while since I used luxurious plates for plating. It seems my skills hadn't dulled. I decorated a chocolate mousse as if it were a piece of art. Dylan and the apprentice chef watched me decorate, moved by the sight. The beautifully decorated mousse was carried by the staff to the private rooms where guests were waiting. All the dishes were successfully completed. Dylan, who had watched me cook, and the apprentice chef, who had assisted me, applauded. I showed respect to the two of them. I was exhausted from preparing a full course after such a long time. Dylan, with tears in his eyes, said, John, you really saved us today. Thank you. I was glad to have been of help to Dylan. It was a brief moment, but I enjoyed cooking for the guests again. I was actually thankful to Dylan for giving me this valuable experience. I took off my apron and was about to return to the room where Ashley was waiting. But a staff member approached me with a worried expression. In a flurry, he said, a guest has requested to meet the chef who prepared today's meal. Indeed, I was the one who prepared the meal today, but I'm not the official chef of this traditional hotel. It wouldn't be appropriate for someone like me to greet the guests. Then Dylan rushed over. If you don't mind, John, could you greet the guests? Dylan, who looked at me with pleading eyes, is one of my few friends. Thinking it would help Dylan, I decided I could at least make a greeting. I stood up. The staff member guided me to the private room where the guest had requested my presence. It was the room next to the one where Ashley and I had been. Could this room be? I had a bad feeling about this. Excuse me. The staff member opened the door to the private room. Inside were Mason and the five-star hotel chefs who had visited our place today. It was Mason, as I had feared. I tried not to make eye contact. Mason, not realizing it was me, began to speak. Your cooking was marvelous. Each dish was meticulously crafted, and all were exquisite. Would you consider becoming the exclusive chef at my hotel? I was speechless, shocked by Mason's praise. I never imagined Mason would commend my cooking like this. Dylan, listening from behind, was also surprised. I looked down, unsure of how to respond. Then, suddenly, he leaned in to get a better look at my face. You're John. Mason was wide-eyed with astonishment. Why are you here? Did you make those dishes? Hesitantly, in a soft voice, I said, due to various circumstances, I prepared those dishes, and Mason looked at me incredulously. No way. How could someone as incompetent as you create such delicate dishes? Stop joking around. Mason's loud voice echoed throughout the private room. Then the five-star hotel chef sitting with Mason stared intently at my face. It seemed like he suddenly remembered something. Aren't you John, the head chef? The five-star chef looked at me with shining eyes. I still vividly remember. We had met when I was still the head chef at an overseas five-star hotel. Back then, he was an apprentice chef and assisted me. The five-star chef, now brimming with confidence, had a different demeanor back then. That's why I always encouraged him. Mason, puzzled by the revelation, asked the five-star hotel chef, what's going on here? Mason seemed to be in a state of panic. It's understandable. 
He couldn't easily believe that someone he thought was just an employee turned out to be a chef. Then, the chef from the Five Star Hotel explained to Mason that I had once been the head chef at a Five Star Hotel. Mason accidentally dropped a glass he was holding. Back then, your dishes were revolutionary in their deliciousness and became quite the talk. I'm truly thrilled to have tasted those dishes today. That's impossible. Mason seemed unwilling to believe that I, whom he had looked down upon, was a top-class chef. Then, the five-star hotel chef made a surprising offer. John, meeting here must be fate. Won't you join me in cooking at the five-star hotel's restaurant again? Me, cooking again. It was an incredibly flattering offer. I definitely wanted to cook again. However, I worried that becoming busy again might mean neglecting Ashley and my daughter. Then, Ashley, who had been listening to my conversation from the next private room, quietly emerged. She looked at me and whispered, John, you never know when you'll get another chance like this. It's okay to think about yourself more than me. I made up my mind. I told the chef from the five-star hotel restaurant, I'd love to, but there's a place that needs me more. I'm sorry. The five-star hotel chef nodded in disappointment. The position of head chef at a five-star hotel restaurant could be filled by someone other than me. But I felt that only I could be the chef this traditional hotel needed. Those present were astonished by my decision. But Ashley was smiling. Dylan, I want to protect the cuisine of this hotel. Will you let me be the head chef? Dylan was moved to tears by my words. You, a distinguished chef, are willing to protect my hotel, even if it's not a five-star hotel. Dylan confirmed with me several times. But my mind was made up. After a while, I firmly quit my job as a cleaner at the luxury hotel. Then, I officially started working as the head chef at Dylan's hotel. From menu development to ingredient sourcing, I spared no effort in crafting top quality dishes. Thanks to this, the hotel's restaurant quickly became extremely popular. That's not all. The hotel was fully booked. Eventually, we even started receiving media coverage, and before we knew it, we became a five-star hotel. It was some time after I started working as a chef at this hotel. I was about to leave work as usual when I encountered Mason waiting for me. Why was Mason here? I intended to ignore him, but he approached me. Would you consider becoming a chef at my hotel? I'll offer you good terms with your cooking. My hotel is sure to become very popular. I was surprised to see Mason, who had always looked down on me now turning the tables as if nothing had happened. At the same time, I knew I definitely didn't want to work at a hotel with someone like him. I cannot work for someone who belittles and underestimates others. With that, I left the scene. Mason was left standing there, dumbfounded. And just like that, a year flew by. I continued to focus on developing new menus. Now, our hotel has become so popular that reservations are but three years in advance. Thanks to Dylan's consideration, I occasionally bring Ashley, my daughter, and my father to the hotel to enjoy the cuisine. I hope to continue creating delicious dishes that both my family and our guests will appreciate.